morning and welcome to our service from St Barnabas and St Mary's this morning. A warm welcome to you, especially if this is your first time watching one of our uh, worship videos. It's great to have you with us today. We're going to uh, worship God through song. We're going to lift our voices in prayer to him. And we're going to hear from his word this morning as we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us afresh. We ask that he would open our hearts, that we would be challenged, that we might be changed from one degree of glory to another. So, as we begin our service this morning, let's pray, inviting God's Holy Spirit to come and to meet with us wherever we are watching this video today. Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we welcome you here this morning and we ask that in all we do and say we might bring glory to your name. We ask Holy Spirit that you would come upon us in power, equip us for the journey ahead, remind us of the Father's love and show us your joy and your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our first song this morning. Give his 
come and we recognise God's deep love for us. So we recognise the times when we have let him down. The times when we haven't turned to him in prayer. Those moments when we failed to live up to our own standards, let alone his. So, as we come before him this morning... We're going to invite us all now to confess to God our failings and receive the love of the Father through the sacrifice of his Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible readings read today by David and by Iris. This reading is from Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 to 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 15 And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of all the many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Kate and I used to watch um, CSI. I don't know if any of you have watched it too. Um, but one of the things uh, that was great about that show, amongst many things, was... Uh, the theme tune, the theme tune was the song Who Are You by The Who. The question of who we are is one which is fundamental to the human experience. As we've gone through these last few weeks or months of pandemic, the question of who we really are may have come to the fore. Who are we? if we can't do our job? Who are we if we can't volunteer and do the things we've always done? Who are you? And the answer, according to Paul in Galatians, is that we are children of God. We're going to explore Galatians chapter 4 today. We're going to actually start a little bit before our reading we had read to us. So, in the previous chapter of Galatians, 
Paul has been speaking about the differences between law and grace. He's used some quite provocative imagery. He's used the image of a jailer, a disciplinarian, to dramatise the function that the law has. The Jewish Christians must have been quite astonished by what Paul had been saying. The Jews had been redeemed from slavery in Exodus. When God sent the Jewish people the law, it was to set them free. If God had redeemed his people from slavery, how could Paul then say that their whole existence under the Mosaic law had been slavery? And so Paul, in this illustration, clarifies that the Jewish people under the law are like children before coming of age in a wealthy Roman household. Children would have had a guardian, someone who they had to obey and who would teach them the way they should go. Obedience to that guardian is evidence of their love for their father, but it'd be inappropriate for them, once they have come of age, to be kept in the care of that guardian. Once that day comes, their love for their father is not to be expressed through being subject to that guardian any longer, but by free expression of love from the heart. The illustration that Paul uses in verses 1 to 3 makes the point that even the Jewish people, people, the rightful heirs of God's promise, experienced this certain kind of slavery for a while. It's an interesting phrase that Paul uses. The law's effect on our corrupt nature, even though the law was good, was to bring us into bondage under the elemental forces of the world. That phrase, the elemental forces, is um, a word in Greek, uh, stoikeia, or a stoikon. It was basically a line of things, things lined up in a row. Uh, but it came to mean, um, if you like, the ABC, the elemental things you learn. The idea of the ABC of the universe is important. It's that principle of cause and effect. You get what you deserve. It rules our natures. Each of us feels that that is the way things should be. And when we live under that idea, when we're good, we should get good. And when we're bad, we should get bad. But Paul tells the Galatians to go beyond the elemental understanding of the universe into an understanding of God's grace. God's grace contradicts the ABC of the universe. Because under God's grace, God does not deal with us on the basis of what we deserve. Our good cannot justify us under grace. Our bad does not condemn us. The ABC of the universe isn't bad, actually. We must and we do use it in everyday life. And God has a proper place for it. But we mustn't base our relationship on God on this principle. Since we are now under grace, God does not deal with us on the principles of earning and deserving. It's hard for us to shake that elemental principle. But it's essential if we want to walk in God's grace. When we live on the principle of earning and deserving God's love, we will fail. So Paul shows us in verse 4, the beginning of our reading today, how we grow up. How we, as slaves, become children of God. Just at the right time, God sends his son. We are set free to enjoy the full rights of being his children. At the centre of these verses is the narrative of the gospel itself. God sends his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law. The incarnation, the birth, the perfect life and obedience of Jesus and his redeeming work on the cross. Jesus comes not only as God's son, but also as one born of a woman, woman born under the law, the eternal son of God in heaven, 
adds humanity to his deity and becomes man. Because Jesus is God, he has the power and the resources to redeem us. Because Jesus is fully human, he has the right and ability to redeem us. He comes to purchase us out of the slave market, from our bondage to sin, and to redeem us, to be adopted children of God. John Newton, the man who wrote Amazing Grace, knew this only too well. As an only child whose mother died when he was seven years old, he went to sea and as he grew up he ended up becoming the captain of a slave ship. He had an active hand in the horrible degradation and inhumanity of the slave trade. But when he was 23, uh, his ship was about to sink and he cried out to God for mercy and he never forgot it. He never forgot how amazing God's grace was. That he had received mercy as bad as he was. To keep it fresh in his memory, he wrote across the wall of his fireplace uh, the verse Deuteronomy 15, 15. You shall remember that you were once a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. And in the two verbs in verse 5, redeem and receive, we see both sides of our relationship with God. God has acted in history to redeem us, to set us free, for our lives to be changed by it. We need to receive it. We are adopted into God's family. And because we are adopted, we are granted more in Jesus than Adam ever had. God sends his Holy Spirit to us so that we can cry, Abba. Father. Abba, a word which they didn't translate because it was the word Jesus himself used. Most akin to the word daddy. Implies a level of intimacy, but it also implies a level of trust. To know at the deepest level of our being that God is our Father, is to put our trust in him. We can know with certainty that we are God's children, dearly loved. Our sense of identity, the answer to that question, who are you? If we are followers of Jesus, if we believe in him, is simply this, I am a child of God. The Spirit of the Son moves us to call God Abba, Father. And then to do so with confident trust and willing obedience. The same kind of confident trust and willing obedience that Jesus shows in the Garden of Gethsemane. All that Jesus did and said flowed out of his relationship with his father. His sense of identity, who he was, was not based on his ministry, what he did, but just the reverse. He did what he did because he knew who he was. Likewise, the witness of God's spirit in us is that God is our father. We are his children and that needs to be the centre of who we are and all we do. When the world around us is having an identity crisis, when people are trying to find out who they are, when they go for therapy to discover their inner selves, when they search for their roots and build their sense of self-worth on the foundation of their achievements or on their family ties. We have a gospel to proclaim. The good news of Jesus 
is this. God loves the world so much that he sent his son to make us his children. We should always be amazed that we can pray, Abba, Father. Because we can. And we should. Because we are beloved children of God. May you know that truth in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit today and always. We're going to sing two songs asking God to make you confident of that truth and sure of your security in him. stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are
You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us All this love so undeniable I can hardly speak Peace so unexplainable I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love, love, love You're a good, good friend As we reflect on God's love for us, let's turn to him in prayer. Father, I pray that this community connects with you, sharing their feelings, thoughts, deepest concerns and fears, not forgetting what they are most grateful for. I pray they hear from you, that the Spirit guides their steps and transforms hearts. The church cafes are an opportunity to reach out to our communities and I pray that their light grows brighter as the weeks go on, drawing more people into our church family. I pray for your spirit to guide us to more opportunities to serve on in our new normal, giving fresh hope to those around us and growing your kingdom in Derby Green and Eversley. You are truly just a prayer away. I just pray for this realisation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The unseen, unconscious, built-in advantages benefiting white people. The shackles that remain, unjust challenges, creating a ripple. White people widely represented on TV, getting recognition for their talent, living life carefree, yet black representation almost absent. Not being profiled or unfairly judged, but speaking freely. Colour not creating a smudge on your character, your ability. It's a cause for concern in this age of inclusion where we must all learn to put to rest this illusion that we are all equal when clearly we're not. We must challenge the sequel, bringing justice central to the plot. Bring it to life to fruition. White privilege is a cause of racism, a belief turned into action. We need a rise of activism. We need an interaction. Don't shy away from the topic because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Our presence in fighting for good is microscopic in comparison to those made vulnerable. Don't hide in ignorance. Engage, listen, educate yourself. Make the difference. Be your best self. People of colour dehumanised by people of power are life prejudiced before it's begun. There'll be no peace until something is done. We are a failing society. We are bystanders to prejudice. We are on unveiling variety, brought together in one embrace. It is not enough to condemn racism. Our faith compels us to speak up and take action against oppression and injustice in all of its forms. We fuel the diffusion of responsibility, staying sat down and waiting for someone else to fix it. We are lacking humility. It's something we need to admit. People of power do nothing but lie, and we all cower and let people die. We are kept segregated, kept apart from rising up. We need to be more educated. We need to stand up. People are dying, but no one cares enough to save them. Many of us aren't even trying. 
People sacrifice others' lives to please their own selfish discomforts. People refusing to care, prioritising themselves, toxifying the air, only breathing for oneself. Judging everyone we meet, using God's name in vain. We must openly love everyone we meet, starting a new chain. We can't pick and choose what we believe so it suits us. We should dare to feel uncomfortable. We are selfish people failing to follow a selfless Christ. We are nothing like Jesus. We are failing as his disciples, as followers of love. There is so much hatred in this world, yet we all try to fit in, to be accepted, to be happy. Bury the disparity, be bold. Let's not be a prisoner, nor unhappy. We need to be a world of supporters, inclusive, embrace colour, encourage differences, treat each other with love and acceptance. We need to be kinder. Where is this love? Greet everyone you meet with a smile, wrap yourself in kindness like it's the new style. Sprinkle happiness everywhere. May love throw widely through the air. Kindness is the most valuable thing you can give. Be somebody's reason to live. It costs you nothing at all. An act so simple and so small. Care a little more, not treating as a chore. Giving even a little of our time. Sharing a smile is not a crime. Be the good in the midst of hate. We cannot sit back and wait. We should be aiming to create a better world. Our priorities are extremely curled. Help as many people as you can, otherwise you'll see the end of man. Extend a loving hand, learn to be kind on command. Be an army of glowing hearts. Your words and actions can change the world. One act of kindness can save a life. May we learn to be more like you, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church. I pray that you will instill in each one of us passion to follow you more nearly, to love you more dearly and to know you more clearly, so that we can be all you want of us. Then we will see your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Lord, give us faith to expect to see miracles, to believe the good news we have will change lives and we will see communities changed where those suffering from loneliness and depression will be comforted and those on the margins of society will feel welcomed. Help us to love as Christ loves, without judgment or prejudice. We pray for unity amongst denominations, working together to bring change. Holy Spirit, fall in us, we pray. We pray for our brothers and sisters suffering persecution. Lord, empower them to stand strong in you, to pray for those that are persecutors so that they will see your mighty hand at work and will be even more emboldened to start new churches in the midst of this oppression. Lord, I thank you that our church leaders stand alongside those being persecuted are able to encourage the church to stand with them. Lord, bless all in leadership. May they be open to be led by you, to hear clearly where you want your church to serve others and support the poor. We pray for the leadership of our local churches, St Mary's, St Peter's, St Barnabas, St Swithin's and the Baptist Church. May we work together to bring change to our community so that we see our children excited about bettering themselves for the good of others rather than being lost with no hope, wandering around aimlessly. We pray for hope in the lives of those who are suffering mentally, physically and spiritually. Lord, we long to see this community lead the way in revival and restoration, so that we will see your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shall we join together in the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. And Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I do hope that you have found time and space in this service to meet with God afresh and that the Holy Spirit has been able to minister to you. If there's anything in particular you feel that you would like prayer for, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. All our contact details are on the end of the video in the notices. Please do uh, stick around for the notices after the service this morning and uh, have a look at all of those. And please do read the newsletter um, to see uh, what else is going on as we finish with our final song this morning. Let's pray that the church's foundation, our own foundation, will be Jesus our Lord. the Father, give you grace and peace, to journey onwards with him, and to know his love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.